All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be my full review of this knife, and this is the La Tierre by La Sabot. So this is a knife that I got from Knives of France, which is a great site where you can buy a whole bunch of different knives. They're all made in France, uh, all traditional knives. For the most part, there are some that are a little more modern, but um, most of them are very traditional. And this La Tierre is an interesting knife because when you look at it, it looks extremely traditional. It has, you know, a very classic horn handle with a bolster, a nice simple kind of upswept blade shape there. Um, and then it does have stainless steel, but that's, you know, something that is on a lot of traditional knives. But there's a really interesting story behind this knife. And first of all, I want to highly suggest that you go and check out Stefan's blog at knives-of-france-blog. Uh, not only is his dealer site great because you can get a lot of cool knives, but I really, really enjoy his blog. Uh, he goes into articles and de lots of detail on a whole bunch of different patterns of knives that, that he has on his site and generally French knives. And so there's a really interesting article on this La Tierre. And what happened was this city, Tierre, became, you know, hundreds of years ago, the capital of knife making in France. So uh, most of the knives, or at least the majority of knives, were made in Tier, And it was known for being, you know, the capital of knife making in France. And the, the other cities, so there were other cities making knives, and they became known for certain other models. But for whatever reason, Tier never had its own actual pattern, its own model. And so in 1994, which is interesting because that's relatively recent, less than 40 years or less than 30 years ago. Um, and so less than 30 years ago, uh, a conglomeration of knife makers and cutlers, knife manufacturers came together and made a guild that basically created this pattern. So they created this pattern for the city of Tierre. And it's a pattern that can be used by, you know, whatever manufacturers, as long as they follow the guidelines. So it's, um, you know, a specific pattern. It has this kind of S shape to it. It has uh, specific, you know, qualities of manufacture. It has to be made to a certain standard, the materials. All of the, the knife has to be made in or around Tierre. Uh, and, and so it gives it the, a distinctive look. So when you see a La Tierre, you know that it's a La Tierre. And that's true whether it is from La Sabot, like this one, or there's lots of other manufacturers that make them. And they do make their own little adjustments, you know, change some things about the blade shape or the handle, things like that. But, you know, when you see one of these knives, the La Tierre, it is immediately apparent that it is that pattern. So I think that's really cool because what it does is it, it gives it some authenticity. It makes it so you know when you're getting one of these knives that it was made in this or around this city, um, that it is made in France, that it's made up to the standards. Now, this knife isn't GEC level fit and finish, um, but it is a very nice knife. And you know that it's going to have that authentic feel to it. So I really like this knife. I really like the design itself. It feels great in the hand. It's a pretty big slip joint. You can get a full four finger grip on it. Um, I think that it is a very practical handle and blade shape, very comfortable in the hand. And you know, you can use that blade shape for pretty much everything. Um, cutting up your uh, baguette, if you want to use stereotypes, uh, but actually your your lunch basically is what I kind of am thinking of there um, so cutting up your your sub if you want to <laughs> use the western Pennsylvania nomenclature for it um, but whatever your lunch is cutting that up um, as well as you know outdoor tasks I think that it's going to work well for um, fishing you know gutting and cleaning a fish even hunting you know a bigger game like deer and things like that I think this blade shape is pretty much a general use blade shape you'll be able to do pretty much whatever you need to with it 
Um, I love the horn handles. That's one of the things that a lot of knives on Stefan's site, Knives of France, have these horn handles. And I just think that they're really beautiful. And it's not something that you see on American traditional knives from places like Case and Great Eastern Cutlery. So I really like that. Um, I want to give you some size comparisons on this knife because, again, it is not a small slip joint. So here is a Great Eastern Cutlery number 15. You can see that it's a good bit shorter than the Lautier. And then another French knife. This is the, basically the Duke Duke. This is the El Baraka version, but basically the Duke Duke. Another large slip joint, and they're similar in length. Um, the Duke Duke or the El Baraka is a little bigger, but similar in length. And then I wanted to show you a, kind of a comparison to a similar pattern, but from a kind of a, um, you know, American <laughs> pattern, I guess. This is a sow belly. So you can see that it, there's a kind of a similarity. It's definitely not a sow belly. The Latier is definitely not a sow belly, but it's the, the closest thing I could think of um, as, you know, an example of a similar American pattern. So um, as for the construction of this knife, you know, there are some gaps on the back springs, as you might be able to see there between the bolster and the liner. Um, the, the blade doesn't fit perfectly to the spring. But, you know, in general, I think it, the main thing is that it has that authentic feel. So, you know, that feeling like, honestly, that when I when I buy a gradation cutlery knife that I get that I don't necessarily get buying, you know, some other traditional knife manufacturers in the US, uh, I think that these have. And, uh, you know, it just feels like a, a true traditional knife. Uh, it also opens and closes very nicely. These French knives have an interesting little difference between them, how they work, and uh, American slip trench. You can see that there's this kind of deep cutout in the tang. What that does is it makes it really snap open. So really snaps there and has a little bit stronger of a detent, you might say, in that open position. And then it breaks past that, you know, kind of snappily. You can see that there. And then from there, nice strong spring, um, very well centered, no proud tip either. So I really, pref uh, really appreciate that. And then um, I actually, you know, this is one thing that uh, a lot of French knives are designed so that the edge actually sits on the handle. The reason for that is so that you can continue to use it. It doesn't get a proud tip. You don't have to drop the kick because there is no kick as you sharpen it. I, I don't think that this has much blade wrap, maybe a little bit towards the tip, um, but definitely not as much as some others that I have that are of French origin. So I appreciate that also. And, you know, it's just a great knife. I, I have carried and used this a good bit so far. You know, the 12C27 Sandvik Steel is something that a lot of people are familiar with. It's used on a lot of different knives. And, you know, it works fine. It's not a super steel by any means, um, but it definitely will work. This knife also can be pinched open, although, you know, the nail nick works great also. And um, I just think it's a really cool knife. It, it's great to see that, you know, as recently as only 30 years ago, they did create this new pattern that has become popular and can be a kind of symbol of this great knife making city of Tier. So I really enjoy this La Tier by this Par Le Sabo or La Sabo. It is what this knife gets. So a La Tier, oh, I got back into saying it wrong. A La Tier knife, it gets this mark and then this little T mark here when it passes, when it, you know, is a, a, a La Tier. And then it also has to say Par, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly, the manufacturer. And there's lots of other manufacturers, like I said, that make them. And I have been strongly considering getting more of these La Tierre knives from Knives of France. Particularly, there is a brass handled version that looks really sleek and really cool. So I am definitely considering checking that out as well as lots of other knives on Knives of France. <laughs> to be honest, there's a bunch that I wanna get and hopefully I'll grab before they go out of stock because um, that's another thing I appreciate about Knives of France is you can get them. They don't sell out immediately like GEC knives, but at the same time, you know, 
they're made basically by hand, small companies, um, or at least, you know, not in massive quantities. So, you know, they don't last forever, but they don't sell out immediately. So I do appreciate the ability to buy a very authentic feeling traditional knife like this Latier by Le Sabo, um, and, you know, have it be a good buying experience. Um, so if you do go to Knives of France and decide to buy something, you can use my code Knife Thoughts. You get 10% off orders of $50 or more. And uh, tell Stefan I sent you. And um, yeah, I really enjoy this knife. I've been carrying and using it a lot, and I don't see myself stopping. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can check out my other social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.